Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create some linear lettering all in Adobe Illustrator. Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. And in this tutorial, we're gonna learn how to do some linear style lettering all in Illustrator. Now you can do this with your own letters if you want to draw them yourself with a pen tool, or you can do it like we're gonna be doing with an existing font. So either way, it's absolutely fine. So we're gonna jump to the screen now and get started. Rightio, so we're now in Adobe Illustrator. And first things first, we need to go up to File, down to New, and create a new document. Okay, so I'm gonna go with, well, we'll go with 1920 by 1080 just for fun. And I'm working in the RGB color mode. 72 PPI is fine. Click create and we have our new document. So if you do want to create your own lettering, you can actually do this with the pen tool. You can draw your own letters. This is absolutely terrible, don't do this. Draw your own letters, increase the stroke, and then you could, for example, round off the stroke there and you could draw your own letters and do the effect that we're gonna be doing in this tutorial. But I'm gonna be using an existing font just to make things interesting. So let's click the type tool. We'll click and we'll type a word. I'm gonna type the word game. And with the main selection tool and holding shift, I'm gonna scale this up. So we'll make this nice and big. Now this isn't the font. So I'm gonna go over here to the property inspector in the character panel and I'm going to type poly and this is called poly rounded i think this might actually be a paid font but what i'll do is have a look for some similar alternatives essentially we've got a few different weights here now i'm going to do something quite thin with rounded caps on the ends of the letters so i'm using this as my starting point but you can do this with any font so what i'm going to do now is i'm actually just going to space these letters apart a little bit more so i'm going to go back over here and go over to the tracking and we'll type, let's say, 50. In fact, we could even type a little bit more. Let's go for 80 instead. Press return. And we can always adjust the spacing and bring them closer together at the end. The worst thing is if you make them too close together and then they get attached to one another. You'll see what I mean in a moment. So I've got my lettering here. I'm totally happy with my word. So I'm going to go up to type and down to create outlines. Now what this does is this makes this text a shape in Illustrator. This is no longer editable. We can jump into outline mode, which is command or control Y, and you can see it's just a regular old shape. No editing these letters here, mm mm mm. But that's okay, because it isn't live text anymore, we can do a few other things. So first of all, I'm gonna select this here, and I'm going to go to my swatches panel. I've got mine docked over here on the right. If you don't see yours, just go to window, down to swatches. There you go. And I'm going to double click on any swatch. It doesn't matter which one because we will change this later on. So I'm going to click red, check global. This is super important so we can easily update our colors later on. And actually, I'm going to do another one as well. So we'll double click on blue, check global, click OK. And I'm just going to I'm just gonna move these swatches next to each other. There we go, best of friends. Okay, so we now have our text. What I'm gonna do next is go up to Object, down to Path, and select Offset Path. And in fact, actually, it's probably a good idea to zoom in when doing this, so I'm just gonna cancel, grab my Zoom tool over here, and just zoom in. We can do this on just one letter, that's absolutely fine. So Object, Path, Offset Path, check preview and either I've set this up pretty nicely actually so you can use the up and down arrow keys when clicking in this offset box and you can see it adjusts the offset so what this is doing is it's actually creating a copy of our existing lettering but with an offset so I'm using the up and down arrow keys to adjust this you can also hold down command or control on the keyboard and you can move 0.1 of a pixel so if you want a little bit more, a little bit more detail there. Now the goal here is to match the same width as our original lettering. And you can see that width there. If you can't see it for any reason, you can do this in outline mode. So 12 pixels seems about right. So I'll click okay. And you can see they're both the same color. So we can't actually tell 
what one's what. And if I move them around, they've also become grouped together. So I'm just going to go to Object, Ungroup, and now all of these pieces should be individual pieces. So I'm just going to select all of these new chunkier pieces that I've created with our path offset. I'm just selecting and holding shift. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make that white. And then if I go to object, arrange and center back, I'm going to just make sure that this is definitely behind the blue lettering. So back in outline mode, it looks something like this. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to select all of that white lettering by holding shift again. And we're going to do the same thing again. Go to object, down to path and select offset path. And if we did this correctly last time, we can use exactly the same settings. So we get that consistency, click OK. And then go to object. Well, everything seems to be ungrouped, so we should be all good. So I'm then going to apply my second color, that's this red here. And again, just go to object, arrange, center back if yours isn't at the back. So we should have the largest lettering, the red one at the back, then the white one, then the blue one, or whatever your colors are. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the white lettering, and then go up to object, down to compound path and select make. Now what this does is make sure that Illustrator treats all of these individual letters as one single object. So I'm going to do the same here for the red, selecting all of these letters holding shift, object, compound path and make. Now the reason that I want each of these paths to be treated as individual paths is because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the red lettering. I could hold shift and select the white lettering. And if I go up here to window down to pathfinder, what I can do is use this option here, the second one along minus front, also known as subtract. In fact, what I'm going to do is just throw a background color behind so you can see what's about to happen here. So there we go, I'm just throwing a background color in. I'll select the red and the white, go to the Pathfinder panel, and then use minus front. And what it does is it knocks out the white from the red. Now, if we didn't make these two elements a compound path, what it would do is it would only apply it to one letter. Now you can do it individually on a letter by letter basis, but sometimes it's much easier just to do the whole thing at once. Okay, so we can see that's worked now, that's fantastic. We can actually just get rid of this black background. And I'm actually gonna use the direct selection tool here just to click on this inner part of the A and just press delete or backspace on the keyboard. Select this one, delete or backspace again just because I didn't really didn't really like the way that was looking. Okay, so this is going pretty well so far, which is always good when you're doing a tutorial. So now what we can do is we can select the letters and you can see they're all grouped together. So we could go to object, ungroup and select each letter individually. And actually I'm gonna go and regroup all of these. So just select each set of letters individually and just go to object and group. And we could adjust the spacing if we want to now. So you can see if we made them a little bit close before, what happens is when they touch like this and we make them a compound path, they can be combined into one single letter. And then we can't really separate them very easily. So it's always better to make sure you've got a lot of space between your letters, then you can always nudge them together a bit closer after. So we can just zoom out a little bit. We have something that looks like this. Just pop that in the center. And because we have those global swatches, I can now go into here and I can just double click the swatch, check preview, and I can go and edit it from here. So rather than having to go through and manually apply the color changes to the lettering, I can just adjust it all from the swatches panel. And then we'll change the blue one as well, check preview, go for something like this, and we can edit this color at any point. So there we go, fantastic. Okay, so that's looking good. Now we've created our linear lettering 
with the path offset but now what we're going to do is we're going to actually break this up now because we're using an existing font there's no real easy way to kind of make a divide in here but we can do this one way so if i go over here to my shape tools left click and hold and just select the ellipse tool what i'm going to do is just left click and hold shift so i get a perfect circle and then just give this the color white and what I'm going to do is use the zoom tool to zoom in super close. And you can see it's snapping two different things, which is uh, which is interesting. So we can go up to view and just make sure we turn off snap to pixel. Snap to point is fine. Having them both turned on can make things a little bit complicated. So there we go. That's just stopped that snapping. And I'm just going to scale this down holding shift. And I'd recommend zooming in as close as you can here. I'm going to try and make this as accurate as possible. But you can always zoom in a bit further. Just for maximum accuracy. And this is just one way of doing it. It's a very manual way. But if you zoom in super, super close and then do this, when you zoom back out, no one is going to be any the wiser. And typically, once you've sized up one, what we can do now is hold down alt or option and drag this to create a copy now this space here is going to be the gap between the different parts of your letter so you can adjust this depending on how big a gap you like you might want a small one or a big one i'm going to leave mine here and again just zoom back in reposition this you shouldn't need to adjust the width if you've taken the time to get it all correct beforehand and what I'm actually going to do, because I have taken the time to get this correct, I'm just going to hold Alt or Option and drag a copy over here. I'll color it black so I don't lose it, but that's going to be kind of like our template, so I can reuse this asset in a moment. So these are all good. I'm going to create a break here in my lettering. So I'm just going to drag over everything to select all of these shapes, and then go and grab the Shape Builder tool here. If you don't see it, it's located under the Live Paint Bucket tool. So we'll click that and what this allows us to do is combine shapes or subtract shapes from one another. So if I hover over this intersection here and hold down Alt or Option, you can see this changes to a minus, but you can see it's also selecting this lower part of the shape here. So what that means I need to do is just zoom back in here and maybe just make this a pinch bigger just so there isn't that gap down the right hand side. So I'm just going to make this a tiny bit bigger something like this. So if that does happen, just make sure that you've closed off any gaps or we'll select everything, grab the shape builder tool and you can see now this inner part becomes selectable on its own. And we can hold down alt or option on the keyboard and just left click and it will remove that. And then what I can do is click here and drag through to combine these two shapes together. If your color disappears, don't worry, this does happen sometimes. And then what I can do is click on this one and drag this through to connect that into one piece. So if it does disappear like mine's done, just select everything or select off everything just by clicking anywhere else, grab the main selection tool, and then we'll just reselect these different pieces holding shift and then just go and reapply our color and it's applied them to everything. If it does do anything strange like this, what you can do is then use the direct selection tool and then just select individual shapes and then apply your color to it that way. So the main selection tool will uh, select everything. In fact, it selected the entire group because I grouped this together, that's why that happened. But if you want to select individual shapes without having to ungroup anything, we'll just drill down for a bit more detail. The direct selection tool, that is your friend. Okay, so we've created our gap in our lettering. We can jump into outline mode. Just check everything's looking good, yep looks good to me and you can zoom back in here and if you want to go and clean up any paths here again using the direct selection tool then you can click on that and you can do so but to be honest when you zoom out like this no one's going to be able to tell the difference okay so we've done one letter i'm going to use this little template over here bring this guy along so i'm going to do the next one here and then the m and the e those ones that's going to be your challenge so we'll zoom in here. We could add more than one break. So we could position this here. We could then do another one over there by just holding Alt or Option and dragging. 
and you can keep these black as well if you like. Now depending on the font you're using you might need to adjust this. Some fonts will be a consistent width all the way around, some might vary slightly, it depends on the, the font you're using and the quality of that font. So I'm just going to create another copy of this, we'll go up, there we go, something like that, jump into outline mode, check everything's good, and then just select everything using the shape builder tool. Hover over that middle piece, it's selectable on its own. Hold Alt or Option to get the minus, click, and then we can just connect these up like so. And remember, direct selection tool to select this shape. And then we can go and reapply that blue if it does lose that color. And then we've got one more over here. So just bring that size down a little bit. I'm just going to zoom in for maximum detail. Something like this. And then in fact, I don't even need this shape anymore because I've taken a bit more time to get this one correct. I can just hold Alt or Option and drag this one out as well. Position it somewhere there. Zoom back out. Select all the shapes. and then grab the Shape Builder tool, Alter Option, and then just connect these up. So you can see I'm slowly starting to speed up, and once you uh, become familiar with this, it does get much quicker. And you can see we've got a few little black pieces here from where I was kind of rushing then. So we can just use the Direct Selection tool to select them. Now I could either add them as the same color here, or I can just press Delete and Backspace to just completely delete them. So I'm just gonna select these with the direct selection tool and then just remove them all together. And then you can jump into outline mode and clean up your paths if you need to. So I've done the G and the A. If you're following along, then it's your turn now to do the M and the E. And what I'm gonna do just to finish this off is grab the rectangle tool, just create a nice big rectangle and we'll pick like a really a dark purpley color, I think. Go to object, arrange, center back and then I can go object and lock the selection just so I don't move the background by mistake. I'm going to position that back in the center because it's ever so slightly off and then just go to object and group. Now one last thing we can do because we've created something that is very similar to neon lettering we could if we wanted to select this go edit copy edit and paste in place Go to Effect, and down to Blur, and select Gaussian Blur. And then just preview this, we can bump it up. Just to add a little bit of glow to this, click OK. Now if you want to edit this, you can go to Window, down to Appearance, and you'll see it listed here. So you can click on this to edit, or you can just select it and delete it. And if you want to get a better blur, we can also go to Effect, document raster settings just make sure you've got your resolution set to 300 ppi transparency and then you're clipping around the object just crank this up to like 200 or something really high just so you don't get any clipping of your gradient if you do use a larger number and then we can click ok zoom in uh, and there we go we've added like a, a glow effect as well to our text so if you're going for neon lettering this is one to go for if you're not, just delete it and then you're back to the original lettering. And there we go. So that was how to create some linear style lettering all in Illustrator or neon, if that's your thing. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do have any questions or comments, you know what to do, drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.